And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Call with your car questions at 888 Car Clinic. With us on the line now is Eddie Altman, editor in chief, car and driver. And folks, the October issue of Car and Driver features the annual lightning lap in which editors put the year's hottest performance cars to the ultimate test. Eddie, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house. Thanks for having me, Bobby. It's good to be here. Before we get started uh, and get into the times and your reviews of the world's fastest sports cars, set the stage for our Car Clinic listeners and viewers. What is Car and Driver Lightning Lap competition, and where do you conduct your testing, and what goes into pulling off such a feat like that? Well, uh, Lightning Lap is an annual test, and this is our ninth running of it. And the whole idea is not to do a kind of comparison per se, but just to generate lap times of the 20 or so hottest performance cars of the year. And we take them down to Virginia International Raceway. Uh, so that takes some doing, getting all those cars down there uh, in, in uh, Danville. And we choose VIR because it's fast, it's technical, and it's really the closest thing we have to an American Nürburgring. And it really tests the car's integrity. And that's really the point. You know, we generate lap times of all these cars and see where they, they stack up and we run them against the clock. But the, the truer meaning of the test and the deeper meaning of the test is to see if, you know, the performance claims of these cars that have performance aspirations, if they bear out, if the cars really have that kind of integrity to stand up to a really, really tough racetrack like VIR. So the results are in the latest issue of Car and Driver. Based on your testing, what are the fastest supercars for 2015, and how are all the results calculated? Well, we use a GPS-based V-Box system. It's a highly, highly accurate 100 hertz data measuring system that the car makers use. So we get very, very precise times, and we're checking and rechecking their times, the car's times, with uh, different editors behind the wheel just to make sure that we're within the realm of what's ultimately achievable. So this year, the top five, starting with the fifth place car, uh, is the Mercedes AMG GTS, and that car, uh, as tested, I think that was $172,000, and uh, it's just a beast, that thing. It's got 503 horsepower, rear-wheel drive, kind of a front mid-engine setup uh, with some really trick engine mount, uh, adapt adaptive engine mounts that keep the car, the secondary ride, pretty, pretty balanced within the car, and that... AMG GT is kind of built to take a piece out of the 911's hide. But in fourth place was the Porsche 911 GT3. Track bred, 475 horsepower, rear engine, just a monster. Great, great car, very consistent around the track. Great brakes. In third place, now we're in the legitimate supercar realm. We're into the $250,000 Lamborghini Huracan, and this thing was painted bright green. It's got all-wheel drive, 603 horsepower, just a, another total monster. In second place, the McLaren 650S Spider at $300,000, and uh, that's the, those are the same people who make the F1 cars. So, you know, that's a car that's really at home on the track, but beating them all this year, is the hometown hero at $100,000, relatively cheap, the Chevy Corvette Z06. That's amazing. So it dusted all of the European heritage brands, and it just turned in an absolutely stellar performance on this track on this day. And, you know, there, there are really some amazing aspects to this car. It's the fastest braking car we've ever tested. It's got the most grip, uh, best road holding that we've ever tested, and that really came into play here. Um, it was just it was a spectacular car to drive around that track and had tremendous amount of downforce. It really stayed stuck to it. And, you know, I was thinking about the old Z06 compared to this one. That old Z06, at the limit of uh, its tire's adhesion, it got a little spooky. You didn't know exactly what was going on. But now this uh, Z06, it's got that electronic differential in the back. It's really, really well honed. It's just an incredibly drivable thing on the street. But when you get it on the track, it really holds together. And, uh, you know, kudos to General Motors for creating such an amazing, amazing car. 
We're talking with Eddie Alterman, editor-in-chief, car and driver. And, Eddie, a couple of questions that I have, and, and kudos to GM. When you look at the cars uh, and think about the cars in the class here, especially when you mentioned the 911 GT3, because Porsche and, and road racing, and you mentioned Nuremberg, I, I've been there. It's amazing to me that, uh, I mean, how dare an American car? <laughs> it, it reminds me of the days when, when Cobra came out and, and, and won all That's the right. races. I mean, that That's just right. it's not supposed to happen. I mean, really, exactly. Really. Uh, well, well, the Corvette has 650 horsepower, and you know it's got some some more go. But you know, the the what you mentioned is exactly right. You know, Porsche has been honing its skills on the racetrack really from its inception, and you know they won the first Le Mans with the 917. Uh, back in, I think it was 71, and that was a watershed moment for them. But, you know, you got to give it to General Motors. They've stayed racing for a long time. They go to Le Mans every year. The Corvettes have been dominant, really, really great GT cars. And a lot of what is in that C7R that races at Le Mans is in this Z06 streetcar in terms of materials, in terms of development and engineering, and it's, uh, it's a serious piece. Well, no, no doubt. Uh, a quick question. You, uh, I did not get the numbers on the Mac the, the McLaren uh, Spider. What was the horsepower rating on the McLaren, and well, is it an all-wheel drive or to a rear wheel? It's rear. It's 641 horsepower. So here we have a McLaren Super, I mean, a, a supercar, a Spider, and they, they have the Corvette relatively the same uh, horsepower. Uh, right. I don't know horsepower to weight, what, what the differential would be. But if, if I were, number one, Porsche, uh, given you know the German background, uh, AMG for that fact, a Mercedes Benz, and and the Z06 came along and dusted. Uh, can you tell us uh, in, in the brief, the elevator speech, what the differential between the fastest, the Z06, uh, and the slowest? That, listen to that, the slowest uh, AMG. Well, the AMG GTS was uh, went around in 2.51 flat, 2 minutes and 51 seconds flat. The Corvette went around in 2 minutes and 44.6 seconds. So there's some space between those two. Well, no doubt. Uh, the McLaren did it in 2.45.8. So uh, pretty close, but not quite close enough. And, you know, what we found was that in the, the straights, the McLaren pulled ahead, but then the, the Corvette reeled it in through the, the technical twisty parts of the track. So do you know, can you tell us if the uh, other cars had all the electronics? Uh, certainly they're available uh, to the OEMs. They can put on those cars in anything they wish. But did they take full advantage of today's technology, do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, it's funny. The stability and traction control systems in these cars have, you know, multiple modes. So you can set them to give you a lot of slip angle and just kind of save your bacon right before you're about to plow off the, <laughs> off the track. But you can, you know, you can set it to the kind of ultimate nanny mode where you can't get the thing sideways at all. Or you can you can set it to give you some some additional slip and some make you look like a hero. It's not fair. Nobody ever saved my bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Alterman, editor in chief, car and driver. Uh, when does the magazine hit the streets? Magazine went on newsstands Tuesday. Tuesday. And uh, go to carandriver.com for more info. Eddie Alterman, editor in chief, car and driver. Uh, one final question: Were you one of the drivers? No, I'm not fast enough. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you, but you're honest, and that's what I like. Hey, <laughs> thanks for joining us on Bobby Like It's Car Clinic. Folks, doesn't get any better than that. Go to carandriver.com for more information and uh, get yourself a car and driver report and see what GM has done uh, to lead the way. Eddie, thanks again. It's been a pleasure to have you on Bobby Like It's Car Clinic. It's absolutely my pleasure, Bobby. Thanks so much.